presente. Okay, so the last talk of today is on um, this guy. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for giving me the uh, opportunity to present part of my research work. Uh, but really, uh, just on a lighter note, <laughs> Uh, you have condensed uh, uh, the superconductivity all <laughs> in one conference. Like it's a condensed matter physics conference. And all guys, you officially belong to superconductivity and then theoretical superconductors. <laughs> so you have avoided all other subjects, I think, which is not fair. <laughs> right. But uh, uh, I would like to, uh, it's also like first cousin of superconductors, the manganites. <laughs> So uh, the main purpose of this study is to construct, to fabricate, and to design a material which is suitable for uh, thermoelectric effect, thermoelectric generator. Uh, many people are working on, uh, on manganites and uh, their doping effects, uh, but Uh, but I would like to tell you uh, why thermoelectrics. Um, so, you know, uh, we have uh, day by day, uh, the demand, the in, uh, energy increasing demand, and the normal fuel uh, is uh, increasing the pollution in the environment. And all the most important is right now, even though a sophisticated small, small engine use 35% of the fuel and 65% is wasted in the form of uh, heat and traction and other things. So due to uh, these effects, we would like to uh, use these waste heat to convert into a useful electrical energy. So we have different sources of waste heat like uh, in a nuclear power plants and uh, uh, factories and uh, natural gas. And then the most important, uh, our focus is on the automobile industry. Uh, so the advantages of uh, this thermoelectric device is there is no moving parts, so they don't need any like a maintenance and it's environmentally friendly, low noise, um, and then uh, no uh, uh, operation like resistance to mechanical loads and any special position. And easily we can switch from one mode to another. So thermoelectric is basically when we have a material, what type of material we will be have, I will explain you in a later uh, uh, slide. But if just like a thermocouple, if we have a material and we have a temperature gradient, so the temperature gradient uh, Delta T will be directly proportional to the induced EMF generated between the two ends of the uh, materials. But mechanically, the S, the C back position, is NOC proportional to the charge carrier. Uh, the most zipty uh, figure of minute, which tell me how the material criteria should be how the system efficiency which type of material will be best for, for using or converting the waste heat into useful electrical energy is figure of merit zt is proportional to uh, the c peak coefficient square electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity. The challenging part of this is how to decouple the electrical conductivity from the CPA coefficient is both are coupled with each other. Um, like if you look here, it's a typical simulation values, that's not experimental values. Uh, actually, I forget the reference here. I must need to write it here. Yeah. So actually, this is charge gradient concentration. And here is the CPA coefficient. 
So theta coefficient is very large for the insulator because it is proportional to one by n. So increasing the n, the C the coefficient will be decreased. And this is electrical connectivity. So this is metal portion. It's like a phase diagram. It's a metal portion. And this is insulator. And this is semiconductor. So the power factor, this one, as per stigma, if we say the K contribution is very really small or negligible, then let's play with the C bake coefficient and the electrical conductivity. So usually a material which have a moderate charge carrier concentration like a semiconductor uh, will be a best material for a thermoelectric generator. But again, this is just like uh, uh, how the C big, uh, the, the ZP is proportional to the efficiency of the thermoelectric generator. These are the theoretical values, it's a simulations. Uh, eta is the efficiency of the device. Experimentally, we have observed right now a value is about ZP about two. So the efficiency is about the device currently not using commercially, but experimentally is about uh, like 20% something approximately. But we are trying uh, to make it commercial before we must need to have a ZP value of about three, which is equal to 40% or 40, some 40% or 38%, something like that. So what is the challenging part? We need to increase the efficiency. For that, we need to increase the ZP. And for ZP, uh, we have to increase both the uh, electrical connectivity and the S squared. So what I would like to hear mention is the decoupling of, because these both are coupled. If we choose a complete insulator, so CBA coefficient will be high, but the electrical connectivity will be low because S is proportional to one N raised to power two by three. Uh, and, and, and here, look here. And this is proportional, directly proportional to uh, the charge carrying concentration and metallic region connectivity will be high. So how to decouple these two things uh, to get and optimize the wave for a large ZP. Different people uh, tried different uh, type of materials uh, to introduce even like uh, different effects. Uh, the chemical pressure uh, by uh, injection, the doping in the systems. Uh, so uh, uh, different like tellurium chloride and then zinc oxide doping with the iron nickel cobalt with the magnetic uh, particles and doping of nickel particles have been tested to optimize the values of uh, the ZP or the electrical connectivity and the CV coefficient. <coughs> and then why on nanosystems? The same material used in a bulk system of the, uh, of the counterpart have uh, a 0.5 ZT value and the nano is 1.5, so almost three times increase in the ZT values. Similarly, the electrical the, uh, the thermal connectivity is also reduced, which we uh, needed. These are the different people uh, studies in different systems. Um, here is the techniques. Now, how to play with the two parameters. Um, so mixed valence manganides uh, here, ABO3 perovskite structure, which is the structure like. Um, and uh, pair element O3 system is uh, antiferromagnetic and insulating state. And if we mix or the uh, MN, the, the, if we dope calcium or strontium on any other divalent alkaline or element uh, to the A side, to the L side, then 
mn plus 3 will be changed to mn plus 4 depend on the concentrations of the doping so the, the whole uh, electron hole concentration can we optimize by introducing the doping or by introducing the chemical pressure different people are trying with the different size uh, some are trying to change the size and some is with the playing with the concentration but the main uh, thing is how to uh, control the spin dynamic the magnetic ordering the charge and orbital ordering in uh, these types of compounds Oh, this is the closer here. Uh, the electronic structure, what I told you, we would like to play with the electronic structure of the system. Uh, and the second thing is the metallization dynamics uh, or the magnetic spin orientation. So we need to uh, develop such type of system in one direction, it's supposed to be uh, insulated. In the other direction, it's supposed to be or we have like a good conductor, metal or a good conductor. So from actually, if we have power LMNO3, this will be interferomagnetic behavior with the spin up and down uh, through oxygen system because MN plus four and if we have antiferromagnetic system, then we have insulating system. One thing, no, what we need, okay, we need also insulating system, but with that, we also need to have some part or some sort of metallic system. Because we need to optimize two parameters, the electrical conductivity and the CBA coefficient. So if we dope, some divalent alkaline earth element on the A side and the lanthanum side, the Mn plus three will be changed to the Mn plus four. And then it, uh, the uh, ferromagnetic and the conductive, which is with double stain and the double stain is responsible for the conductive behavior in uh, uh, this type of organized. This is the phase diagram, which with the doping concentrations, less like a super people study, um, this is the calcium concentration and this is with the temperature. So what we need is the ferromagnetic and metallic region because there we are playing with the semiconductor. But we would like to develop or to design such a system which have uh, optimized more than a semiconductor. So let's uh, uh, make semiconductor even though with the conductor, then what will be happen? So, before that, uh, uh, I didn't put the references here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, and this is antiferromagnetic state. This is candid antiferromagnetic state. But how to, and this is chart ordering state with, with some uh, concentration of calcium with respect to temperature. Two things we have challenging. We also have to fabricate a material which have optimum efficiency, eight room temperature or the temperature from uh, 200 to 400 degrees centigrade because when we put this device with the car uh, exhaust system the exhaust system is about have a temperature about 300 to 400 degrees centigrade so our working environment it will be not a room temperature but it will be about from 100 to 3 or 400 degrees uh, centigrade so the two things, one is we need to optimize the parameter. Also, we need to have these properties at a working temperature of the device, which is about 400 degrees centigrade. So this is what we looking for. This is a type uh, material. In a type material, the system will be have a ferromagnetic within the plane. But if you look between the two planes, it would be have like antiferromagnetic and insulating state. Within the plane, it is ferromagnetic and interplane, it is antiferromagnetic. Now look at this C type and C type. We have a ferromagnetism and metallic state 
between the plane, but within the plane, it will be like insulating state. So if we would like to uh, pass the current in this and x, y, and x direction, then it will be easily passed, but within the plane, it will be have like insulating state. And this is G type. In G type, all the neighboring spill spin will be anti-parallel with uh, each other, even though between the plane and, and even though in after the plane, um, between it, intraplane and interplane. And this is called charge exchange type. In the zigzag, you look at there, it will be ferromagnetic. This spin is parallel to this one, this is this, and this is this, this is this. But if you look like this, and if you look in a straight, then that will be anti ferromagnetic so we would like to play in such a smart manner how to optimize these properties with respect to those competing spans interaction so after synthesis we would like to then uh, first test our uh, system uh, the, how much the composition we have uh, go and what type of element is there. And from the XRD, we also confirm that the bone length, the bone angle and the uh, uh, volume and the crystallite size, even though uh, by sure formula, we can also find out approximate particle size because particle size is very important too. Then, by four probabilistic techniques, we can find the electrical uh, resistivity and then uh, C wave coefficient by uh, C wave coefficient by the uh, This is our data uh, based on uh, the previous uh, designing of the system. Uh, we have tried with the different chemical pressure. Uh, uh, this, this is the sample. And this is the doping concentrations. So increasing the chemical pressure, the, if you look at here, the lit concentrations, basically this is PL9 SB1 minus uh, uh, X and then SB, uh, SB1 minus uh, lit, uh, this whole one. So they have a different concentration. Lead concentration is here. So we have, with increasing the lead concentration, the electrical conductivity is increased. Look, but also here, this one is the electron. This is also in uh, the blue, the red, the green. Look, here with the lead concentration. The power factor. Power factor is equal to the electrical conductivity and the C wave coefficient. So if you look here, the power factor is increasing with temperature, but the more important is here. What? Uh, at different temperature, these are uh, the value expected from this at different temperature. So the blue one is 550. At 550, if we increasing the chemical pressure or the lead concentration or changing the spin dynamic somehow, up to this concentration, 1.36, it is increased. So then it means we don't need to go for this particular sample again from beyond this percentage. What I told you that we need to also play with the charge carrier concentration. So on the large uh, scale, and at uh, this also decreasing, also this is decreasing. So it means like here, we didn't fix the charge carrying concentration. S square sigma, so the, the main contribution is coming from the S. But even though in, in, in some of our cases, we have tried to increase the in, uh, um, S, but with this, then electrical conductivity is NOC proportional. 
So then we will look somehow to the most important factor is the power factor. Then we will look somehow to increase the power factor. Then we have tried with another sample, uh, trying uh, this side constant and try to uh, dog the iron on the B side. Initially, it was pink bit increasing the iron, which is magnetic, supposed to be increase the magnetic and um, electrical behavior of the system, but it was totally inversely increasing the iron concentration here, the electrical, the resistivity is increasing, means the electrical conductivity is totally decreasing. And even though we have checked with the XRD and the compound was okay, and the parameter was on X for And then when we have checked also, uh, the magnetization. Also, here we have observed that by increasing the iron concentration, even to up to 10 percent on the manganese side, uh, decreasing the magnetization means like there is a competition between the double exchange and the super exchange. So, double exchange is responsible for the explanation of the ferromagnetic behavior, means all when the spin is parallel and the super exchange is uh, explain you interferometrism. So it means by injecting the even though uh, magnetic element iron, the antiferromagnetic super exchange dominating the double exchange interaction. Well, here in this case, uh, a CT coefficient will be high. We didn't uh, test it this right now. It's like under investigation. Uh, but uh, actually, the problem is that here that uh, the electrical conductivity is decreasing, and we would like to design such type of system where the electrical conductivity should be also optimized with the CBS of the These are the data from the activation energy, the localization length energy from there. And this was metalization with thermal energy. Okay. I'll just some of the graph for this. So, what I'm concluding that we need a system again with uh, high as high sigma and low k. And we, for commercial purposes, we must need to increase the ZT value, the figure of minute value greater than three right now which we have achieved is about uh, 1.9 something, which is not suitable because the petrol engine right now is using 35% the fuel. And if we increase the ZT to three, then it will be 38%. But if the efficiency is less than from the petrol engine, then it's no use of. Uh, and then nano system also compared to the per compound, we have a ZT. Uh, even though we have tested about the same compound in a bulk system, in a nano system. Uh, so the possible system is semiconductor drop with the excess of electrons, hole ratio, uh, and such that the electrical conductivity and the C-bake provision should be optimized within the power track. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have time for a few questions. Yeah, so I was intrigued. So you showed us some possible magnetic configurations that somehow seem to link to the orbital states, but then it wasn't clear to me how it was actually affected the properties. And how do you assert um, which of the materials that you've studied, which of the magnetic states actually both in the absence of the way you can actually characterize the magnetic. Well, what, what I'm saying still that this is a new system we have developed. We have right now, we have just tested it uh, XRD and uh, the, the system is okay. Uh, and uh, we have the electrical, we didn't uh, check the CPU function and thermal conductivity. 
how they affect and, and how much. You can see that population is in square form. So that's a major contribution. Okay, we don't have a sea tropical system in my university. Uh, actually, we have a collaborator with the University of Waterloo, Canada. Usually, uh, sometimes I'm going there or I'm uh, sell my sample there. So this system is still under investigation. And the other system, I showed you that uh, some is optimized up to some extent. I mean, do we have any? Uh, oh, uh, yes. It is uh, this. It's a clear phase diagram to show you that by increasing or uh, this, even though it, it's not uh, simulation, it's experimental data. I it's the experimental data. Just like you have studied the superconductor phase diagram. So we also have a phase diagram for uh, this type of compound. So, but I mean, you're talking about population at 400 kilometers, which seems to be universal in the normal phase. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why do you then expect us to build temperature temperatures in that phase to save the world? We would like to, we would like to increase this DC up to 200 and 300 degrees centigrade. It's not my work because that's why right now I am not using this material for the practical application. The two challenging is, one is to increase the working temperature, but because above it is them inflating, right? So two challenges, one is to increase the DC transition temperature, because above the temperature, it is uh, paramagnetic and insulated. So well, for insulating, yes, the CP coefficient will be increasing, but electrical conductivity should be very tough because for if we have a material like this and we have an electromotive force uh, generated due to a thermal gradient, well, right now we have a large CP coefficient. Okay, fine, but <coughs> then how to transfer electron from the high temperature state, high uh, potential, because we don't have, because it's insulating state. So we, we need a charge carrier to do a work done to change this electromotive force, reduce electrical energy. So this will be, should this should be right in a range, like another material we have tested uh, up to, 500 Cal one, so about uh, 200 degrees centigrade, centigrade, like that. But these are not tested like right that. And you say we have some sort of equation? No, I'm asking uh, what the relation is because you're talking about the magnetic structure and you're trying to see how it connects to the electric coefficient. Uh, the magnetic structure. Uh, don't have a direct relation with the CB coefficient because the CB coefficient uh, relations is this one. Uh, I really, uh, somebody have quantum mechanical solved it. I don't know exactly how they solved it, but this is just proportional to the energy proportional to the charge carrier. Now, the purpose of magnetic structure is to control two things or to optimize two things, a charge carrier and electronic transport. So what about using multi -state? What about? Using more insulators to make connections. Uh, to more to insulators is really, uh, I think, supposed to be a good. Uh, I, I didn't try, but the uh, more insulators have a very how much is about 90 Kelvin transition DC. But again, what mm, different at the doping, but some, have, some people have a uh, quarter up to 150. But more insulator definitely can be give me this one a high S. But 
they, they don't have a charge carrier too. Yeah? Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, that, that's the main problem. How do we couple the, the yeah, the other aspect of the main yeah. proper problem is there how to decouple the electrical conductivity from the CD provision and both are inversely proportional on each other, including one, we would be thinking another one. But we would like to at the same time simultaneously increasing both. So From I mean, that, we, we, I mean, we can't do anything against the, the equation, right? As long as you have the areas are inversely proportional to the one of the and proportional to the other, yeah, there's going to be some minimum. That's why. But, uh, so, I mean, I thought when you were talking about none of, none of structure, uh -huh, uh -huh. you're trying to spatially separate. Oh, we are right now tested this as nanoparticle. Right now, we are working on nanoparticle. Is that promising to maybe have conducting in some part of the system, some percolating parts? Uh, Not just maintaining the It depends. Two things. Number one, which type of material you are using? You are saying that it will be a conductor? Well, I thought that was the idea behind the nanostructure. Yeah, well, what, 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 here, I, I told you that why nano? This one, we have tried because why they did. What well, this is when I said this time, and I did the second try by the old uh, and uh, some like have a super parameter behavior that is helpful very much for us to in the, in the particle core we have like uh, a thermodynamic system, the, uh, the core, but the shell is some sort of. Parametric system. That's why this is called super parametric system, the combination of the both. <laughs> yeah, um, this seems to be a kind of material where you've got many factors that need to be folded together. How successful have high throughput machine learning methods been for trying to identify uh, good thermal power material? But uh, many, many, many people work in many people working on DFT theory. One of my students, and I'll tell you soon, he's also working on that. Um, but I meant specifically machine learning. I know, I know like, 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 like a computer simulation for like and some of that. I mean, taking going through a huge database of materials and yes. trying to optimize. Yeah, uh, that, 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 that's what we are talking about. Uh, density function theory. Uh, mm -hmm. Many, uh, even though my students love working on that, uh, that uh, uh, I'm a host for supervising him with another uh, institutions, uh, and they are developing some code that what type of material and how much in concentration uh, will be uh, the best candidate for a type of, uh, even though many people, uh, but again, uh, when we have tested uh, some. Theoretical simulation with experimental one, and we have a lot of problems even though it's like uh, examination of solitude, and then we, we have calculated their classification area theoretically, and then we have we don't have homogeneous identical particles. So experimentally, right now we have much more challenges is compared to yeah, but you know, but many people are working on. Oh, thank you. Like what I show you the simulation of the data of the uh, this uh, yeah this one. So these are all the people are working on different simulation. But when we come to the experimental, we don't have a homogeneous particle. I mean, like if I want to try to Fabricate a nanoparticle of 50 nanometers, but I get it from 45 to 55, from 50, 55 to 35, one thing. And also the shape for the body is not identical. It's egg like, some like a, a particle like behavior. We have a different challenges, but the fight is going with time. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
work, and that brings um, today to a conclusion, or at least the talks for today. Obviously, there's a bit more of the day left to do other stuff. Right. Um, probably some of us go to the public.